Welcome back to the channel. Let's turn on some AC. So, I keep it honest with y'all. I'm extremely honest. I tell y'all the truth. I'm extremely transparent. And I'll tell you how it is. Uh, and a lot of times people can relate to that. Why did that light not come on? Don't tell me we got more issues. Um, it's unplugged. Oh man, I was about to say, we got something to work on. We can just stop what we're doing and go work on lights because what we're about to do, I don't want to do. Um, the garage is still 100% of a mess. So I have got to clean this garage up this weekend, um, get this car put back together, which I don't want to do. I don't want to mess with this car. Um, I don't know why. I just have no, I've had no drive to touch this car lately. I want to build another car. I'm itching to build another car. Uh, I've actually been trying to uh, make some deals happen, but uh, we're going to get this back together, so don't exit out and unsubscribe and all that crazy stuff. We're going to get this thing back together, get this thing to the track. We're working on the trailer. We're getting the trailer together, so we're almost ready to go back to track. But before we do that, we got to get the stator installed in this torque converter. Now, I have been dreading this and putting this off and putting this off. Um, number one, I've been busy. I've had a lot on my plate. So there's some stuff that has happened this week that y'all don't even know about yet, that you will know about in the future, um, but it helped me kind of get caught up. So we are gonna set us up a table. Let's just use our, I guess our can of X85L that we still haven't even popped up in, which we have to do. Let's build, set us up a table to do this stupid freaking torque converter. And um, we'll go through the steps. But first, I can't even stand here and work here because there's so much crap. So I have got to clean up this a little bit before we get started, but I also have to do this during business hours. Sadly, it's Friday, 12 o'clock, um, because if I run into issues, I need to be able to call PTC. So it's like, you can't do this Saturday, Sunday. It's too late in the afternoons when I get off work. So literally my only window is Fridays because we close at 11. So if I don't do it this Friday, it'll be a whole nother Friday. I think I'm gonna try to just get it done, um, but let's get this mess cleaned up and then we will dive into the store quarter. All right, so we got this thing taken apart and I have took everything off and flipped it um, over to the tray. So one thing I noticed as soon as I pull it apart is that this O-ring was half in the torque converter, it seemed like, and half out of the torque converter. It wasn't sitting perfectly round inside this groove. And uh, I would think that it should be inside of that groove. Now, when you look at it, it's clearly uh, got some damage to the edge of it in a couple spots. Uh, I don't, I don't know if that's normal or not. I'm waiting for Tommy with PTC uh, to get off lunch. I just gave him a buzz. He's at lunch. He's who I dealt with, so he is who I'm going to continue to deal with. Um, but I do know that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So this is our stator, okay? So this is the one that come out. It was in here like this. And we took it out, flipped it over. We, as in me and y'all. Um, and then this is our new stator, okay? That's gonna go in there. So I'm keeping them separate for right now. Uh, looks like obviously I've gotta take some inside internals out of this and with a snap ring and stuff like that. I'm not worried about the stator. I'm worried about the mod that they want me to do, which is, uh, change the pump angle. So calling them, uh, calling them, Tommy said to give him a shout uh, whenever it's time that he can walk me through it with any questions because I'm not a hundred percent where the pump is. Pretty sure, before I speak to him right now, pretty sure this is going to be the pump in the front side, um, but I could be completely wrong. They want me to chain, bend the fins. They literally want me to go through here and bend the fins. So I don't know if it's, these fins do look like they're bent. So if you look very closely, there's almost like plier marks on them. So I think that's what they want me to do is go through here. And I believe he said stand them up some more. 
can't 100% remember. But uh, we're going to talk to him. We're going to get instructions on what we're changing in here. He said he'll walk me through it over the phone. And then we'll put this thing back together. Y'all, I'm in trouble. Pray for me. Pray that this thing goes back together and works right. Because if I put this thing back together and it does not, then I can tell you what. I'm not going to want to, uh, I'm not going to even want to mess with it and never take it apart again. All right, so I just got off the phone with um, Tommy over at PTC, and um, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to word this where people's not going to think I'm crazy. Like he said that there's there's just there's no way to like measure these like the way they're bent over like they're closer to what I consider a ninety. So if you're going to label this, if you look, if we're going to label this as any degree. I, the camera's honestly making it look like a 45. Like, it really does. This little bent piece right here. It's making it look like a 45, but I'm telling you, if you were here in person, let's see if I can lower the camera down right there. That's more laid over at 90. These pieces back here is what we're looking at. It's more of a 90. So he's saying that if we want it looser to stand it up more to a 45, um, there's not going to be any way to measure this thing precisely uh we just got to stand them up so i think my game plan is going to be let's see here let's grab a pick i think my game plan is going to be to take these things and if you look right now they're like right there i think we're going to stand them up more towards these tops all of them you can see how they're down here more on like this this uh, cut you can almost see like a line right here this darker line and we're going to try to stand them up more towards this edge uh, to create the 45. If you stood them straight up, they would come up over this groove, probably up into here. So I think we're just going to, measurement-wise, we're just going to focus on this out, outer edge um, and stand them up right there to, to that point. This end doesn't move because it's welded. So if we shift over here and look, it's touching, it's welding, welded. So the only place that they almost look torn right here is this side so you really are not doing nothing on this side you're really just moving this half of the fin so i think that's going to be the ticket and then i'm being told that this o-ring i'm not getting much info on this o-ring um if it's correct or not uh, he said the way their email system is set up is that when you email them it actually goes to the lady at the front office um it's 2 30 on a friday and that then she has to send them over to the employees and he doesn't have the email. I just sent him a picture of four to try to get some guidance on on this. And so he didn't have, unfortunately, he didn't have the pictures in front of him to take a peek at. But I just feel like this O-ring is wrong. Man, I just, from a little bit of mechanic experience I have, I just really feel like this O-ring is not the right size. We shouldn't be stretching this thing this far. Um, but he says that this O-ring is out of a C6 uh, transmission. Um, and I can go to the parts store and get it. Uh, he couldn't give me a year what exactly for the c6 but he said just to look it up and that whatever near the c6s were um we should be able to get this o-ring so i guess i'm gonna pause what i'm doing and go try to find this online so that we have all of our ducks in a row before we touch this thing anymore and then either tonight or today at some point or here in a few minutes whatever we will stand these up a little bit more, do our stator change, and then put it all back together. All right, so we just went and got our O-ring from Chris up here at Tri-County Transmission in Wilmington. It's a little hard to find this stuff at uh, a Vance or a Rallies. You can see this one has a red line around it. The one that we have has a blue one, but Chris said that the line, the color of the line, actually just indicates the supplier and um, not necessarily like uh, identifies the part or anything. Um, it looks the same, so let's compare this one to the one we have and see if they are the same size or if the one I have has shrunk. So our new one actually looks even smaller than the other one. I imagine the other one has been stretched. So this is crazy, because um, I mean, the, PTC literally said, yeah, it should be a black one with a blue line. That's what they put in there, is they put ones with a blue line in there. Um, it's the same seal. It's just stretched. I guess it literally just has to be stretched around this, which to me is just 
pure T. Crazy. Crazy as can be. Um, we're definitely going to use the new one, though. We're not going to put the old one in there since we have the new one. Um, and Chris pointed out, he said, yeah, the edges could be tore up right here from just it being um, squished together. It kind of cut off the little bit of extra that was um, poking out. So we're not going to throw this one away because I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. But since I have a new one, we're definitely going to put the new seal in there. So let's get to doing what we're dreading to do. Let's bend some fins. I'm just going to take a napkin and wipe out all the trans fluid that I can so that hopefully when we get to put the O-ring back in here, it's not slippery. Um, it's after three o'clock. I try to call PTC back again. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm bugging them, but I try to call them back again to ask them about the torque settings on the bolts. Uh, the bolts do go all the way through the converter in a lot of these. Um, they're threaded inserts in the converter, but then there's also a nut that goes on the back side. So I wanted to make sure I get the torque right, but now their automated system is just kind of running in circles, loops, like you can't get a hold of anybody. Um, so I'm guessing they closed at three, and that's the whole reason why I kind of wanted to get all my ducks in a row before I started working, because I knew uh, Friday people would start closing early. Even Chris, I just did catch him up at Tri-County because they were closing. They closed at 3. So if I would have been a couple minutes later on that, I wouldn't have been able to probably get that seal. I just don't want to put this O-ring on and then it'd be slippery. I kind of want to go ahead and get it on now so it can be stretching out and relaxing while we're doing the fins in that half. This is just it's, it's crazy to me. And this is how we're doing this. I mean, I literally feel like there should be an option for something a little bit bigger that you don't have to stretch. Stretch out. I mean, it goes in there. I mean, it's, it's in there. Interesting. I just like O-rings that fall in this place, not have to be stretched. But, okay. Let's find some pliers to bend these fins with. So we got like dikes. They're going to be a little too wide. So let's see if, yeah, these will work. Make sure I got y'all at a good angle. I don't have the tripod here, so we're using literally a jack. All right, bear with me on the camera angles. Like I said, I don't have the tripod. So we are going to spin these up. We're gonna pretend like we know what we're doing. So probably should, well, I guess we can just see the models. So we probably should start, mark the one that we are starting on. But I guess you can physically see this much of a change. And all we're doing again is banging up the inside of the converter, but we're just taking this little edge right here and bending it up to this edge. And that is gonna be my reference point. Adjustable wrench would also probably work pretty good.
and you can literally see on these things like this is like they literally bend them down it looks like with pliers there's plier marks in them so crazy so john said to look at the positive side of this and don't be frustrated but i'm the type where and I'd rather just send it back to the company I paid the money to and have them do it because I have enough stuff to do. But he said, look on the positive side that they're just teaching us another skill set. And now anytime the trans has to come out, if we want to make a change loose or tighter, that we and y'all on the YouTube show will know now what to do. Looser is going to be standing it up. Tighter is going to be laying it down. This is like redneck science. I don't want my hands tired. I said an adjustable wrench would probably be better. See, like that one, you could tell was folded down way more. Both of these right here are actually down more than the other ones, I feel like. I wonder if they do them all by hand or if they're going through with pliers also. After I get done with this, I am not going to feel like messing with this car no more today. Are we done yet? And also another point John pointed out. It's like, how many times can we do this before the fins break? I think it's all of them. I should have painted it. But if we spin it around and check it, they all look, they're all looking the same. A little bit of margin of error in some of them. Down a little bit with that one. But like how many times can we bend them back and forth before they break? All right, that's all of them. Just make sure I don't miss anything. That's all of them. All right, so let's swap this stator. Get this headache over with. This is our stator. Daddy? Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to do it. What you doing, Harper? I'm playing with my side. You what? I'm with my side. You was inside. Yeah, we're gonna mess something up. Not really, I'm just joking. But I'm definitely not enjoying this as much as y'all probably are. There's definitely other things I'd rather be doing with my afternoon than messing with a torque motor.
I'd rather go back to work and be sanding a car than <laughs> messing with this crap. Even though it is in the AC. That's nice. Alright, get our grooves lined back up. Actually, I guess let's put these together. One at a time. That way we can see what's going on. I mean, after, I did build my whole transmission. A lot of people don't know that because I wasn't doing YouTube whenever I built my transmission. But I spent one month building my transmission in my own time when I wanted to mess with it. Man, that's a tight fit. Feel like it's all the way down. Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. I don't know if y'all can hear Harper inside. It's her birthday tomorrow. Sounds like she's singing happy birthday to herself. She's pretty stoked. Randy and them are going racing tonight or Saturday night, not tonight, next Friday. And I'm gonna stay at home. That way I can spend some time with Harper or whatever. She after her party, we're getting her power wheels. And that way, when everybody's gone, I can spend some time working with her for their new gift, driving it. So I'm gonna skip the track. We wanna make sure that, you wanna make sure that your snap ramp course is in there. You gotta closely make sure it's in there on that side. Make sure it's all the way in there on this side. This side actually looks like it's not quite all in there, but it is, I guess. in there all right so the way i took it apart you got these cutouts this went down the straight side went up the thrust bearing i think that's thrust bearing thrust washer roller bearings whatever it went on there like that That is how it sounded when I took it out originally. Just for anybody that's wondering. I don't know if that's right or not, but it did sound like that. Gasket on there. Got some oil off my fingers. The gasket. Let's take my top half. Straighten my fins out. Put this joint back together. So all this moves. So I was looking at these grooves cut right here in this top half, but this spins in there. So you don't have to get that lined up. And then on this 
pump. You do have an extra hole cut out for a dowel pin. Two extra holes actually. Looks like, looks like they're offset. And yeah, that piece when you look down in there. When you look down in there. That piece spins. So you can't get that wrong. And what I was looking at was the little grooves right here. So them little grooves right there and right there. But there's grooves in the bottom side of that. So I was wondering if them needed to be lined up, but they literally don't get lined up because you can just spin that. All right. So we got our dowel pins back in. Like I said, it's a, there's three holes together. That's where it goes and it's indexed a certain way. Um, so we're good to go. We got to put all this back together. I don't have no torque spanks on this bolt. Uh, Chris Kenny did say that Devin had serviced his converter, made a stator change and just ran the bolts down on his and it ended up blowing the converter in half. So that worried me, but um, yeah, I don't have no torque specs or anything. Can't get back up with PTC right now. I do know not to put Loctite on these kind of uh, things in the converter because you can pull the inserts out of the converter. So you don't want to use Loctite. Um, these bolts, not only do they go, these long ones, the ones right here are short because they can't go through because you got that standoff. So you have the short ones that go right there where the standoff is on the converter. But then these long ones, they go all, all the way through. The billet's aluminum side of the converter has a threaded insert in it. So this goes into the threaded insert, but then it's also cut out on the bottom side. Well, it's not exactly cut out. Uh, there's a nut that sits on this side. So um, I guess after we run these down, then we come back from the bottom side with these nuts and then run them back tight. So we'll squish this down all equal and then we'll come back from the bottom side and tighten the nut up. The nuts do have nylon uh, locking washer nuts on them. So they don't come loose. But besides that, there was no, and you can look at them, there's no, I didn't clean them up. There's no uh, Loctite or nothing like that. From what I understand, you don't put Loctite on crap that has threaded inserts in it um, because you can literally rip them out. So even when you're putting like your converter bolts in through the um, flex plate, you don't, you don't put Loctite on that. So we're just gonna run these all down finger tight with a ratchet. And then I guess by hand, I'll put a decent amount of torque on them. Might go take a break probably and read online at some, uh, see if I can find anybody talking about torque specs on this kind of ordeal. Um, and go from there, but I think we're going to be good, y'all. I'm over to this, I can tell you that. All right, so how many of y'all were screaming at the TV that we have a another bearing over there? That is going to be the last one that you put in. As you can see, I didn't make it far before I looked over there. It's another good reason why you should use one of these like trays. These you can pick up from like Advance or AutoZone that catch fluid um, because you can lay everything within the tray and nothing's gonna roll off the table into the floor and then you make sure that you don't forget anything. All right, so that one was laid upside down. So we're just gonna go back in like that. And that's gonna put a roller bearing on the top side. Now we look at our tray and we have everything else cleaned off. So, but see there, right there, look at that. The gaskets popped out. That's what I think happened when I pulled it apart. Let's get that back in there. 